So this is a really stinky sheep milk cheese from Corsica. Really, really strong. That's why it's got the love the stink on it uh -huh. there. The Timinois is a, it's a hazelnut liqueur washed. I live in San Francisco. I've lived in San Francisco since the 80s. And I decided I wanted to work at a place that reflected my values and was some place that would be good to work at. So um, I decided to work at the country's largest retail worker cooperative, which is Rainbow Grocery Cooperative. And we're a very decentralized, low hierarchy, worker-run collective. I got hired into the cheese department, but I, ha I had no particular love for cheese at the time. It just was where the opening was. A couple years later, we moved to this much bigger location. Um, and I had to, me and a couple other people had to figure out how do we make our cheese department more interesting and, um, and have you know, more interesting things, bigger selection and all that. And so that's, that's kind of when I started becoming a cheesemonger. Now, um, a cheesemonger is, is someone who buys and sells cheese, but also there's an implied, uh, you know, expertise there. And, and um, I certainly bought and sold cheese for a long time before I had much real knowledge about it. I think it's deceptive. There's always more to learn. Um, you know, I still hear things and I'm like, oh yeah, I should have known that. And I'm still learning, you know, here it is 16 years later and I'm still learning about cheese. One of the reasons I'm really interested in cheese um, is because I think it's, it's a really political food right now. I and mean, I think we're in a time period where, you know, people are talking a lot about food politics and a lot about food issues. Um, and the reason that, that cheese in some ways is, is a more political thing than most um, is because of the way that, that milk is priced in this country. Most fluid milk is sold, um, it's a commodity, so it's traded, the prices are set in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Therefore, a lot of the small dairies have a harder time competing against big, large agribusiness. And one of the ways that they've been able to survive, or th those that have have been able to survive, is, um, is by making cheese. Because what happens when you make cheese is that you can price it according to what it costs to produce it, rather than pricing it by whatever the Chicago Mercantile Exchange decides you have to price it for. One company that's just doing a really amazing thing is Jasper Hill in Vermont. Their mission is kind of to support small dairy farming in Vermont. They only have about a third of the dairy farms that they used to have up in that area. Um, and so the, you know, the Keeler brothers, Jasper Hill, decided what they would do is help uh, support small farmers by getting them to go from fluid milk to making cheese so they'd be able to survive. And, um, and they, to do this, they, they built these aging rooms and they're helping people develop cheese, market cheese, because they all will say, you know, aged at the cellars of Jasper Hill below whatever the farm and cheese name it is, and giving them expertise on how to age cheese. And that's, to me, that's a really interesting development to help support small farmers. More and more people are producing cheese in their local areas, and there's a great opportunity for new cheese makers to be like that person at their farmer's market making cheese wherever they are. And there's a lot of great experimentation and, um, and innovation in American cheese right now. And it's, it's really exciting time to be involved in it. I think that the future of cheese is really kind of bright right now. The amount of especially American small production, high quality cheese is just growing astronomically. Um, I, you know, I, I've been a judge a few times at the American Cheese Society and other, other events. And, um, you know, just the entries have skyrocketed. I think the first time I went to the conference, I wasn't a judge. But the first time I went to the conference, I think there was about... 300 cheeses, you know, and now there's there's more like 1,300 cheeses being entered, and those are just American cheeses. I think a lot of people are making a lot of really great cheese, and I don't see any signs of that slowing down. You know, hopefully people will really pick up on, on the new ones, be still open to new cheeses, and be interested in, in, in finding, you know, new farmers and new far cheese makers and to try out.